All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the first derivative test for curve sketching. So we have a little theorem here, or more of a description of what's going on. If our derivative is always greater than zero on some closed interval, then we're going to say that f is increasing. On the other hand, if our derivative is going to be less than zero on our interval, then f is going to be decreasing. So if you remember, this f prime of x is going to be our slope. And if our slope is positive, then of course our graph is going to be increasing like this. So here we say f prime of x is greater than zero. If on the other hand our slope is negative, then we have all of these ranges of possibilities. So our slope will be negative and thus you can kind of see that decreasing means that your values of y are going down and increasing means your values of y are going up. So using this test we are going to be able to take our functions and find out where our functions are positive and negative or where they're increasing and decreasing. So here we have an example f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5. So first, we have to take our derivative, which should be fairly simple by now. So we'll have 12x cubed minus 12x squared minus 24x. And to figure out our intervals, first we need to figure out the critical points. So we'll have to factor out a common factor here, which will be 12x, and we'll be left with x squared minus x minus 2. And we can factor this out further so we can find all of our critical points. So this will be x minus 2 times x plus 1. So when we draw our number line here, we're going to get a critical point at 0, a critical point at negative 1, and a critical point at 2. So now what we'll do is we'll take a point in each of these intervals. So we'll take a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. And we're going to find out if it is increasing or decreasing, mainly by figuring out if the interval is positive or negative. So let's pick x is equal to negative 2 to do the first interval. So we are going to get a negative times a negative times a negative. So this is going to give us a, a negative. So I'm just going to fill this in up here. And again, I'm not necessarily picking the values and figuring out a number. I'm just trying to see if the signs turn out to be negative or positive. If we pick x is equal to negative 0 0.5, we're going to get a negative for the first term. We're going to get a negative for the second term. And for the third term here, we'll end up with a positive number. So this interval will end up being positive. Let's pick x is equal to 0 0.5. We're going to get a positive times a negative times a positive. So this will end up being negative. And if we pick x is equal to 3, which is greater than 2, we'll get a positive times a positive times another positive. So after 2, it will be positive. So now what we can say is that it is going to increase between negative 1 and 0. And it's also going to increase from 2 to infinity and it will decrease in the negative intervals. So we'll have negative infinity to one, along with zero to two. Now we don't include the endpoints here because these endpoints are just gonna be zero, so it's really neither decreasing nor increasing, it's just kind of staying constant. So now that we've done this, there is something cool that we can see here, which really is the first derivative test. And that is, if we have a scenario where we go from positive to a negative at a point C, then we're going to call C a local maximum. And if we go from a negative to a positive from that point C, then we have a local minimum. And why is this the case? Well, if the slope is positive, and then here's our point C, and it starts to go negative, we get a graph that looks like this, which we can see is a maximum. And similarly, if we have a slope that's negative and then flattens out, 
and then starts going positive, we can see that we have a minimum here. So from the previous example, we have this lovely chart that we filled out. So when we take a look at our critical points, we see that there is a change from negative to positive at negative one, which means that negative one is going to end up being a minimum. And again, the definition of what it is, is right here above. You can also visualize it in your head that we have kind of like a, uh, a situation like this and like that. It's not a very good drawing, so I'll just erase that, but goes sort of like this, I guess, if you want to make a nice drawing. And we see that zero right here is going to be a maximum and two is going to be a minimum. And of course, this is all because we're shifting from negative to positive, positive to negative, and negative to positive. If you go from positive to positive, that does not mean you have a maximum or a minimum. You sort of just have nothing at that point. All right. Let's do a practice problem, and we'll see how you guys do. So I want you to take this function, x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 3, and I want you to tell me on each interval, is it increasing or decreasing? And for the critical points, are they local maximums or local minimums? So take a second to do this, and then I'll come back with some answers. All right, hopefully you had enough time there if you pause the video. So first of all, let's take our derivative. f prime of x is going to equal 4x cubed minus 4x. We can now factor some stuff out here, so we'll factor 4x out, and we'll get 4x times x squared minus 1, which is the same thing as saying 4x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Let's make a little a number line here. So we're going to have a 0, a negative 1, and a 1. If we take a value smaller than negative 1, we are going to get a negative a times a negative times a negative. So we'll have a negative interval here. If we pick negative 0.5, we can see that we're going to get a negative times a negative times a positive. If we pick a 0.5, we are going to get a positive times a negative times a positive. And if we pick a value bigger than 1, we're going to get a positive times a positive times a positive value. So we're going to get a chart that looks very similar to the previous one. So we know it is going to be decreasing below 1, it'll be increasing between negative 1 to 0, it'll be decreasing between 0 to 1, and it'll be increasing after 1. So we have that, and now if we take a look at our maximums and minimums, we're going to have a maximum at 0, because we can see it changing from a positive to a negative there, and we're going to have minimums at negative 1 and 1, because we can see a negative to a positive and a negative to a positive. This does not tell us what the absolute maximum and minimums are. You would have to calculate them yourself, but we're not looking for absolutes, we're just looking for locals. So this was the first derivative test. There is one more derivative test, the second derivative test, and that will be covered next video. I need to make sure I don't have any other practice questions. Okay, so I'll see you with the second derivative test next video. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I will try to address them the best that I can.